We just got an induction stove and, well, we love it. My concern is that I have two young kids and a cat who likes to jump up on the counter. And unlike a gas stove where you have an obvious flame or a traditional electric stove where the coil will literally glow red hot, the only indication you get on this that the cooktop is hot is this little LED indicator on the front panel. So especially for a bar set up like this, where you might have people sitting on the other side, or again, the cat walking around on the counter, it might not really be obvious that this is hot. So I am curious exactly how hot it does get, and if it gets hot enough to burn you. So in this video, I'm gonna get out my trusty infrared thermometer and do some experiments boiling water and seeing how hot the adjacent cook surface gets and how hot the actual induction area on the cooktop is when you remove the pan. So first, a little calibration here with my infrared thermometer. We're not really going to get into the science of how these work in this video, but I just want to make sure that I am reading about room temperature on all of the adjacent surfaces here. This does depend slightly on the emissivity of the material, and you might get slightly different readings on different surfaces, even if they're at exactly the same temperature and thermal equilibrium. But I'm not getting anything super weird on the black uh, glass cooktop here, so about 70-ish degrees, um, you know, slightly different from the counter, maybe I'm only getting 69 or so on the counter, but good baseline calibration. So next I'm going to turn both of these on. I have a pan that has a nice flat bottom and a slightly older pot that's a little dented and is a little more wobbly. Boil the water in both of these and then take some readings. Okay, so I've turned both of those burners onto high and I am checking around the burners as close as I can get to the edge and still reading about room temperature, as opposed to if I check the pot itself, you can see that is already heated up to about 80 degrees. And if I measure through the water here to the bottom of the pan, that's already heated up to about 120. So these boil water pretty fast. I'm just gonna keep checking again around the edge. You can see each induction area is lined with a circle. And I guess while I'm at it, this particular stove has a non-induction warming element, so that is just a traditional electric heat. And if I remember, <clears throat> I'm going to turn that one on here and measure that as well. And see how long that one takes to heat up. This stove <clears throat> does have a feature for the induction elements where it will detect if there is not actually a pot on the element and then it will flash the burner at you. So this LED here will flash to indicate an error that there is nothing on this one. So if I do that, I don't think this one is actually going to heat very much. But in theory, the basic resistance warming element I don't think has that detection function and you can see that is heating up. So I'm not going to really worry about the resistance warming one too much since this video is about the induction function. You can see this one is starting to boil already, but even then the area right next to it is still about room temperature. Even though the pan is almost up to boiling, I'm almost at 200 degrees already. Okay, the water in the pan has now been boiling for a couple minutes. And what's interesting here, as I try to avoid getting fog on my camera lens, you can actually see the shape of the water boiling in a ring. So that's kind of a function of the induction surface and how this particular pan is conducting heat. But it's not evenly boiling across the entire surface, so I wonder if we're going to see that in the temperature profile when I move the pan over. So what I'm going to do is slide the pan over and then try to, as quickly as possible, measure how hot the surface is, simulating say you were boiling a pot of pasta or something, you go dump the water, and then the surface is no longer visibly hot if you're viewing it from that side because you only have this little LED indicator on the front. But, there we go, move that off. Gotta take a quick measurement. And the surface is, was 107 degrees in the middle there. And as you can see, I'm getting kind of a temperature profile across the burner element. So it was lower in the middle, peaks at about 220, kind of halfway out the radius there, back down to about 150 in the middle, and then I should see a symmetric, I would guess another peak on this side, 
although as it's taking longer to do here it might be starting to cool down so I think the highest temperature I measured there was about 220 degrees but that is all within this labeled circle for the induction element again it does drop the moment I get outside that line it's back down not to room temperature but to around 80 degrees or so and the highest I'm reading so it's remaining hot and so even though that pot has been off for a minute or so now if I hold still in just one spot maybe we can see how quickly oh I took the pot off but I didn't turn the burner off so let's turn that off just in case <clears throat> now I'm gonna try and just hold still for a minute so we can see how quickly this is cooling down at all so you can see it's dropping by maybe a couple degrees a second but I definitely would not want to touch that if parts of it are still up around 200 degrees. So again, even with a very flat bottom pot, we saw kind of a variable temperature profile where there are different hotter spots around this. I'm now going to take, let the water in this pot boil for a few minutes. And remember, this one had more of an uneven surface, so I'm going to test that as well and see if that makes a difference. Okay, same thing here. This pot has been boiling for a few minutes. I'm going to slide it out of the way, turn the burner off, and get measurements as fast as I can. This time I am up to 211 right in the middle. Highest I've seen so far was about 226. So again, kind of variable as I move around here. Actually a little more consistent in the 210s, 220s over a bit of a wider region with this pot. So while I was waiting for the water to boil, I did some quick Googles, Googling, and it looks like these temperatures definitely are high enough to cause first degree burns. Um, burn is a function of both exposure time and temperature. So you can go Google first, second, and third degree burn charts to figure all of that out. But this is definitely hot enough that, you know, if you touch it and recoil instantly, you're probably not going to get third degree burn permanent damage. But again, if you have small kids, there's no indication, no visual indicator that this is hot right now. It is not literally glowing red hot. Even though the burners are off, this little LED indicator on the front will stay lit. But again, that you really only see that if you're on this side of the oven doing the cooking. If you're a cat crawling around on the counter or a kid reaching for something, my kids draw over there. So if they um, you know, are eating there at the bar or drop something or spill something in this direction and go to pick it up, that is still very hot. So if you get one of these and have kids or pets, definitely make sure that everybody is on board with not touching this, even if it is not visibly on fire, if you're switching from gas stove or glowing red hot, if you're switching from electric, because that is still going to be hot enough to potentially cause burns.